Welcome to Concealed Tactics again. Today we're going to be discussing uh, lasers and how they can benefit you in your um, dry fire practice. Uh, we haven't talked a lot about dry fire yet, but uh, it's an awesome thing to practice. But how can a laser benefit you in dry fire practice and how can you get some feedback from it? If you are lucky enough to have a laser, I know there's debate on whether um, lasers are the best thing or not best thing. Some people are against them. I, I really like them just for the simple fact that I don't really use them when I sight. I sort of ignore them. Uh, some people can't do that. I don't have an issue with it. I really don't pay attention to the laser when I'm at the range or someplace. What I do pay attention to the laser is if I'm doing uh, more of a moving target situation or I happen to be in a situation where say I fell down and uh, I had to draw my weapon, but I was laying on my side and I didn't have time to get up to a full draw. Or um, the situation, you know, maybe I just turned around, you know, I had to pull the gun out and I turned around, I really don't have to get the gun up to a full draw, but the, uh, the bad guy or whatever could be just a few feet away. The laser gives me a good indication, at least I'm where I'm shooting and where I'm targeting. Um, that's one of the main reasons, is just for the simple fact, if you can't get up to a full draw, position with your left or right hand or both hands or however you're shooting a uh, laser is really good at least giving you a ballpark of hey look at least i'm shooting this guy in you know center mass area or the bad guy or whatever you may be targeting there um but how can it help you in um how can it help you in dry fire practice well because the laser is very sensitive to any movement, I don't know if, you know, I'm sure some of you people have been to the range and seen guys like me with a laser and they watch it bouncing all over and it drives them nuts and distracts them. I really don't even see it when I'm shooting. Um, but um, when you're practicing with a laser, and we're going to use this great, I love this Glock, isn't that neat? Anybody got a couple of gram they don't want to? don't want and you can sort of shell that out and give me one of those but we're going to use that just because it's a nice background uh, for this but when you're practicing with a dry fire technique and a laser see how that shines on there well when you're very close and this goes back to my video about uh, how th small movements and small percentages and small things affect your shot at longer distances well the dry fire practice when you pull that trigger if it bounces it moves all over then you're gonna know that you're having some sort of trigger you're snapping the trigger you're pulling the trigger you're you're pulling your gun if I do this and I get this kind of motion every time I draw my trigger if I say I'm, I'm aiming right at that little white spot right there but I go like that every time I pull my trigger well you're getting some feedback that you're doing something wrong you don't have a steady trigger pull or you're jerking anticipation of recoil or something well again this goes back to my uh, things as small percentages you could practice this very very close like that and it's not gonna affect your shot I mean if I if I shoot something right there and that laser is right on that I'm pretty close I'm gonna hit something very close to that but at 10 5 10 feet away you're gonna notice these movements become any hand motions become more and more visible alright and if I start moving my hand away and I'm purposely shaking a little bit here so you can see you can see that dot becomes pretty bouncy well all those things become amplified over farther and farther distances so at five ten feet away it might not make that much of an impact the small little trigger glitch you have this little flick just a very small movement won't really mean much but when you get to the point of ten twenty thirty forty feet away that little bit of a movement, that little jerk, will now send that off inches the farther and farther you go away. So this is a really, really small video on how a laser can help you with feedback. When you practice your dry fire drills, and this is also really great because we're, I just put up one about the holstering and unholstering. If you can go into a dry fire practice routine of pulling your gun out from a holster position, have some sort of uh, small area that you want to focus on on the wall or someplace, remember, point in a safe direction, not towards your neighbor's house where 
you know, make sure you safety check your weapon and everything before dry fire practice, all that safety first. But um, if you can if you can draw your weapon, put your sight up and put your bead on that uh, whatever you may have marked on your wall, a little mark or nick or whatever, spider, whatever, and then you can watch that dot. And if we, when you pull the trigger and uh, it bounces an eighth of an inch or quarter of an inch or sixteenth of an inch, you know you've got some something to work on. Slow down then. Go back to practicing, uh, you know, dry fire techniques. And the laser is a great feedback to see, you know, how badly you are bouncing, how badly you are maybe snapping the trigger, maybe anticipating recoil. Um, if you have snap caps, this is a great way to work with it too. Uh, let you cycle some rounds and do some different things and uh, stuff. But just another little tip on how a laser can help you uh, in your dry fire practice. And uh, we'll talk to you later. Thanks. And if anybody's got any extra money, shoot me the uh, pick up that Glock right there. All right, you guys have a good day. Bye.